Hello, wonderful family. Another glorious day and another wonderful opportunity to share the word with you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Today, I want to tell a little story from um, one of my favorite men of God. I'll just be paraphrasing a story he uh, told, something that happened to him. And it has to do with um, faith. And uh, the way I titled this is, at what point do you stop standing? At what point do you throw in the tower concerning a matter? Listen, it's about uh, Ken Hagen Sr. Ken Hagen or Kenneth E. Hagen Sr. Um, he talked of a, a time when he himself and his wife had agreed for in prayer about a specific sum of money that they needed. So he went to minister in a particular place following this agreement with his wife. And after the session he had, the, um, the church itself dismissed quickly and those, the ushers just took all the money, all the offerings that were collected and didn't count it that day. They just packed them up and dumped them on the table and left in a hurry. Apparently, they, they ran late, so they, they, they exited the building in a hurry. Now, it, it was up to the pastor and Kenny Hagen to now count the money. Remember, Kenny Hagen had agreed with his wife about a specific sum of money to be received for him to have, uh, which would have been given to him from the offering. He didn't tell... Uh, the pastor beforehand. So they proceeded to count the money. The pastor said, you take half of the money, uh, you take half of the offering, I take half of the offering, and we count it, and then we'll tally. So when they did the first count and tally, he was short of what he had agreed with his wife by some over $20, $20 or thereabouts. And the, the pastor apologized to him and said, oh, I'm sorry. We didn't uh, get as much as we've been getting prior to now. I'm sorry. This is what we got. What did Ken Hagen do? Ken Hagen said no. That himself and his wife agreed, according to Matthew 18, 19. Uh, Matthew 18, 19 and uh, 20. That's he will get a certain amount of money. And as far as he was concerned, God never lied. So if they didn't see it, it means that there was a mistake. If they didn't get that amount of money, that they would have to recount it again. So the pastor said, well, if you say so, if you say so we'll recount it. So that money has to be here. So they went ahead and counted it again. This time around, they switched piles. He counted what the pastor had counted before and the pastor counted what he counted before. And they came up with the same amount of money. They were still short. What did Ken Hagen do? Did he now say, oh, I guess we missed it this time around. Uh, maybe some other time. No, he didn't accept no for an answer. He said, we have to count it again. They counted it again and it was still short by the same amount of money. He was... View, viewing evidence to the, con uh, to the contrary of what himself and his wife has, had agreed on based on God's word. So this was staring him stuck in the face. Did he accept it? Did he throw in the towel? No, he didn't. He said the time he would leave that place to go, if he left that place to go, he would have to go to every church he had ever preached in to tell them that God lied. That because he knows God cannot lie, they would have to count that money again. So they counted that money again. And this time they were shot again by the same amount of money. And then at that point in time, he remembered that during the service, he had he used to have a book stand. And he had sold a particular Bible to um, a lady in church. And instead of the lady giving him cash, the lady had given him a check, made a check out for that Bible, and added 20-something dollars as an offering for him in the check. So he stuck and he's, he's, he remembered that he, he didn't put that money in the offering. He put the check 
He didn't put that check in the offering. He put the check in his coat pocket. So he stuck his hand inside his pocket after he remembered and brought out the check. And when they counted, he had exactly, no, not exactly. He had that amount of money that himself and his wife agreed. That is when you added the check and the money in the offering. And a few cents or a few dollars above. It was at that point in time that he said, now I can go. You see, he refused to take no for an answer. He stood on the integrity of God's word. Between you and me, can we act that way? Do we stand on the integrity of God's word? Or we stand based on, stand till we see something that, um, something that shows evidence to the contrary. Something that we say, oh, this is a fact. This is a physical fact. It contradicts what God's word has said. So I, I step God's word down a, a notch. Do we do that? Or we stand and say, irrespective of what I'm seeing, what I'm seeing has to be the lie if you compare it with God's word. For the Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. I ask again, if we were in Kenne Hagen's shoes when that money was counted the first time and counted the second time where you had two pieces of evidence that were uh, um, um, uh, contradicting God's word and agreeing with it itself, would we have stayed again to say, count it a third time? Or would have said, well, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, shall every word be established? I guess I missed it. The man said he was not leaving there until, they, until he had exactly what he had asked God for. Because he knew that from God's side, God couldn't miss it. Instead, it was them that should be missing it. He says, let God be true and every man a liar. That is tenacity in faith. And that only comes when you have confidence in the one you are trusting. You have confidence in God and in his word. That you say, I, 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 I don't mind being wrong, but God cannot be wrong. So what I'm seeing, my eyes are, tell, are telling me a certain fact, but I refuse to agree with that fact as long as it contradicts what God has said to me. I ask again, at what point do we throw in the towel? You only throw in the towel when there is no more need for the towel. You stand, having done all to stand, stand therefore. Contend, refuse to accept it. Refuse to accept what is contrary to what God has said. Stand, it will change. It will change. It might be looking exactly opposite, like as Ken Hagen said. Everything there appeared opposite of what God had said. But he chose, not, just, not, not because he was by himself, but he was with somebody who he could have succumbed to the pressures of somebody else. But he refused to accept that. He told the guy, I am not going anywhere. We will count this thing. Now, when he was asked that, what if after counting it how many times you didn't find it, what would have happened? He said, well, as at the point, as at the time he was narrating the story, that he would have been there counting it till that very day, that is several years later, because he trusted God that much, that that thing must be as God said. Are we willing to give God's word the opportunity to prove itself, or are we looking for the slightest opportunity to say God's word didn't work? If you stand on his word, stand on it, that thing will boil you up. It will cause you to walk on water. It will bear your weight. You are, you are not heavy enough to break God's word. God's word will lift you up. As long as you put your confidence in it and stand on it, he will turn situations and circumstances around to make sure that what he said comes to pass. God bless you. Hallelujah.